Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to be talking about the Top 5 Linux Office Upgrades. So these are the types of things that I have learned how to do in my time doing Linux that have helped streamline my office, make everything better around here, or otherwise just provide a lot better tools and resources without having to go out to extra companies and, and things like that. So uh, we're going to do our top five Linux upgrades. Number five, OSs for different tasks. This is actually quite important um, because one of the biggest problems and challenges that we have uh, as we are uh, as we are navigating um, uh, navigating life is uh, if you only have access to one actual computer box doing online banking, you could be risking viruses. If you have malware because you have some coupon add-on toolbar in your computer, which you should never do anyway, and then you happen to log into your banking or some other system, you can introduce different malware. But if you have separate operating systems for different purposes and different tasks, this can help out. So my greatest example of this is my banking system. So my banking device is simply run off of a USB key. It just runs off of a 16 gigabyte USB key that you can buy from a local store for 10, 15 bucks. You can run your entire computer off of this one banking system. It's not used for anything else. And so you've greatly reduced your possibility of online details being leaked out through malware or anything else. So your, uh, your banking operating systems, you might have operating systems for just data backup. You might have operating systems for uh, doing email and internet searches. You have a variety of different options and you could even run all these different operating systems with only one computer. You don't even have to install second drives or anything. You can use external hard drives. You can use USB keys. Linux gives you the ability to have various operating systems for various tasks. Number four, a VPN. You can build a VPN off of a small box, either a small computer, you could use one of those micro PCs that only cost about 100 bucks. You can attach it to a Raspberry Pi that only costs like 30 bucks. And then what this will allow you to do is this allows an, a very highly encrypted secure connection from your outside your network into your home network for the purpose of either accessing network files or securing your internet if you happen to be out and about at a coffee shop. So if you were to, to go out and sit at a Starbucks or some other coffee shop or whatever else that has free public open Wi-Fi, it's very dangerous to be on an open Wi-Fi unsecured. So if you happen to, if you don't want to purchase a VPN product from someone else, maybe you're worried about logs, maybe you're worried about the, the 14 eyes, maybe you're worried about anything else. Or in my case, I just think buying a VPN is essentially kicking your security down the line from your ISP. There are absolute good, perfectly legitimate reasons to have a VPN. But for me personally, I create my own VPN. I don't use one at my home network um, usually, and I will generally only use one if I'm not in my home network, and my VPN serves me the task to use my internet connection at home and to access my network uh, drives when I'm not in the office, which is an excellent, excellent way for me to uh, make sure that I always have, uh, always have the files that I need. So a VPN is an excellent way that you can uh, upgrade your own office to allow a very secure way for you to access your home network without being, uh, without being here. So with that being said, that is my number four, is you can create your own personal VPN. Number three, a media entertainment system for your TV. So what I use for me is a Raspberry Pi. You can also use any other PC out there and you wanna install an application called Kodi. Now there's entire dedicated boxes which will install a very lightweight system based on Kodi. I use Open Media Vault. There's also Open Elec and there's a couple other ones out there as well. What this will allow you to do is take a dumb TV and kind of turn it into a smart TV that you control all these systems in because it's all open source and it's not collecting a lot of data. Downside, um, last time I checked, these don't necessarily support Hulu, Netflix, whatever. They might by now. I don't know. I just don't use those services. But if you have 
for example, you can use YouTube on it. You can look at uh, a lot of different documentaries, a lot of TED Talks, a lot of other perfectly good, perfectly legally accessible content, all available. And you can actually control it with a tablet, a phone, or a keyboard. Plug this guy into the back of your dumb TV. You can actually, to, um, you can actually use this as a, as a smart TV hub. I also use mine to interface my music and any video libraries that I have. So I can actually watch movies or videos or whatever else on my TV. Or I can actually just queue up music with my smartphone anywhere in the house. It accesses on, on the network. So uh, the video here on the screen is showing you how to actually build one of these. All of these five topics, I have a video here to show you how to actually uh, set that up. Number two, a PFSense router. Now this one is technically not Linux. Okay, this is BSD. It's very close to the Linux system. If you can run Linux, you can run BSD. PFSense is a, a fully custom, um, fo focused on security system that you can install to any computer. What I use for it is a little Fitlet PC. Uh, so it's a little tiny quad core PC. I think I have six gigs of RAM in there and a 250 gigabyte hard drive. And that runs my entire home network, all custom. I can push host files to it. I can block advertising scripts on my entire home network. There are so many amazing things that you can do. Also, added benefit, if you do happen to use VPNs and you like using VPNs, you can actually set up your PFSense router to run your VPNs, okay? And uh, you can even set only certain devices on your network to use VPNs. You could put two VPNs in your PFSense. One of your computers uses one VPN network, another computer uses another. There are so many amazing things that you can do with a PFSense router. It is one of the best things that I have in my office. It runs, uh, I have four, four ports on it, one coming in for the internet, three going out, all gigabit LAN speed, and then I connect that to an eight port switch, and that powers all of the different devices on my network. So PFSense is an amazing thing. You should look into that. Once again, we have a video explaining my settings, how I built it, how I walked through everything, uh, what you'd want to pick up. You can set this up for a couple hundred bucks. Um, and uh, it is well, well, well worth learning how to do it and learning how everything works. Before we dive into the final upgrade, I'll remind you that you can check out the support page at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. If you want to pick up something like a coffee cup or I have uh, mouse pads and stainless steel water bottles, you can go to shop.switchtolinux.com for that. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. My number one useful upgrade has been a network attached storage. There are a variety of different applications out there. I personally use Open Media Vault uh, because it is based on Debian and that's where I'm most comfortable. So if there's something that goes wrong under the hood, I'm going to be able to fix it a whole lot easier. There's also BSD type versions. There's a variety of different ones. What I did with this one and uh, my video here will explain how I did it. Um, I built my video or I built my system based on using a one of the mini towers just the little thinner towers that you can pick up I bought mine used for a hundred bucks I put in uh, two laptop hard drives into it instead of having one hard drive and one DVD I put in I took out the DVD drive because I didn't need that I put in two laptop hard drives and I synced them together so they are a mirror image of each other so it will decrease the odds of a system failure and then I turn that guy up on my network and that gives me a media server, music server, sermon server, photo server, file backups, open network shares, closed network shares, and I even have a Calibri book server. So if you are on my network, you can gain access to my entire library of digital eBooks uh, by, by going on to that system. So that is my number one thing is my network attached storage. Amazing PC. Like I said, it only cost me about 100, 150 bucks to make after I bought, like maybe 200 after I bought the hard drives, which is still way cheaper than buying a comparable network attached storage. And based on Open Media Vault, there are so many more plugins um, that, that will make this thing work. It is just a fabulous, fabulous office upgrade. So those are my top five Linux office upgrades. What are the best things you have done with Linux to help your life and your office at home? I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. 
you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.